Hello everyone. I've been absent as a YouTube content creator for a long time, and I thought I should finally make this video to apologize, explain this long hiatus, and let you know what I've been doing all this time. I've always loved writing, and I've always loved watching and critiquing films. Throughout my YouTube career, which I would say spanned from 2009 to 2017, with a few sporadic releases until early 2018, I gathered a small but very rewarding and supportive community of viewers and fans. I'm still extremely grateful that so many of you enjoyed my style of analysis and humor, and I appreciate how some of you have been checking up on me and urging me to make more videos. Thank you so much for all your viewership, feedback, and support over the years. I gradually lost interest in making video reviews for reasons I'll explain in depth later, but I should have let you know that I wouldn't be making YouTube content anymore. For that, I deeply apologize. What have I been up to since my last video? I've really intensified my freelance writing efforts. I run a weekly film review column for the Mountain Views Mail, my local newspaper. I've been writing this column since April 2014, and this consistent print commitment was the main reason my rate of video production began to decline back then. The Mail has a wide readership, and I've received some great in-person responses from my local community. Since my column has a schedule, and I answer to a great editor, my column steadily overtook my YouTube channel as a working priority. I write a lot of essays and non-fiction articles, and pitch them to as many publications as possible. I'm probably more active now as an article writer than ever before. I've gotten around five articles, not counting my film column, published each year in various print and online publications since 2017. In 2018, The Skeptic published my article on silly New World Order conspiracy theories, Data Extract published a couple of my articles on Doctor Who, and The Asexual Journal published my article about aromanticism and the cracked web series The Stumbling Dead, and I have a semi-regular gig as a contributor for Ramona Magazine for Girls, a great online feminist magazine. I released Transcendent, a book of cyberpunk short stories, in 2017, and I released The Coded Airs, my second official book, in July 2019. I'm immensely proud of this book, which is half a novella about a cybernetically augmented couple in 2099 Melbourne, and half an essay collection on topics such as machine consciousness, the millennium bug, deconstruction philosophy, queer identity, the male gaze in media, and the death positivity movement. The book took about one year and one month to write, with proofreading and editing performed all the while, followed by several months of further refinement, cover design, and contacting people for permission to use their names and quotes in the essays. As you can imagine, The Coded Airs was a huge project, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I've also been expanding my computer skills and retro Mac collection. I built a Windows PC for the first time last year, but I'm still waiting for a better graphics card to complete it. My 2008 Mac Pro is my main work and gaming computer, and I've upgraded it with 32 gigs of RAM, a 500 gigabyte Samsung SSD running at SATA 3 speeds through a PCIe mounting card, a High Sierra installation thanks to DOS Dude's patching tool, a USB 3 card, and a snazzy Firewire hard drive enclosure for backing up my documents. I love my Mac Pro, and next on the upgrading agenda are a better graphics card and a SATA Blu-ray drive. I've also required a rare black MacBook, which I've upgraded with an SSD and uses my work laptop, and I still have my Lombard G3 PowerBook, which I adore. I even acquired a G4 Cube early this year, which became a fantastic upgrade project. My Cube now has one and a quarter gigs of RAM, a 32 megabyte graphics card, a fan for improved cooling, a fast FireWire external CD-ROM drive, and two SSDs, a 120 gigabyte MSATA running Mac OS 9, and a 120 gigabyte two and a half inch SATA running Tiger, the latter in place of the Cube's dead internal optical drive. I use the Cube for old Mac games that are too taxing for my Lombard, and for music, as the Cube's USB speakers sound amazing. My hiatus was caused in part by shifting priorities and big new projects, but also by the changing landscape of video reviewing and online content creation. I still watch a lot of YouTube, 
YouTube is my primary medium for discovering new music, I never use Spotify, and I follow several great content creators. I still love Lindsay Ellis, Todd in the Shadows, Obscurus Lupa, Pushing Up Roses, Geek Remix, and H Bomber Guy, but I'm now also a big fan of Sarah Z, Quentin Reviews, Cosmonaut, Friedrich Knudsen of Down the Rabbit Hole, Maggie Mae Fish, and Samuel Davis. Even before the Change the Channel controversy began, I no longer watched the Nostalgia Critic, Doug Walker, or the cinema snob, Bradikin. I think the Nostalgia Critic became more engaging after coming out of retirement, but he had some good insights offset by an obnoxious persona and tired humor. The cinema snob seemed a clever, charismatic guy, but his main show was too esoteric to interest me anymore, and I've come to dislike the review style of plot recap interspersed with analysis and jokes, which the snob and nostalgia critic both still use. When Change the Channel hit, I was deeply shocked at all the damning, well-substantiated allegations that emerged. I was aware of some of these grievances already, including the horrible circumstances behind Lupa's firing, but the Change the Channel document, compiled by dozens of former Channel Awesome contributors, exposed all the rampant disrespect, exploitation, mismanagement, and even emotional abuse, not to mention covering up sexual harassment, perpetrated by Channel Awesome's leaders. As Channel Awesome dug itself deeper with a spiteful non-apology, and as Bradikin and his wife Laura lied to undermine the movement, I vowed to never watch their content again. Spoonie hasn't made any substantive content for years, but I have even less respect for him now than I did before, as I now fully understand his meltdown and how inconsiderate and lazy he's always been. And like what Quentin said in his review of To Boldly Flee, I had a bit of an identity crisis after Change the Channel. While I credit old frenemy Confused Matthew for inspiring me to make video reviews in the first place, I loved watching Channel Awesome reviews while at university. Video reviews were a big part of my internet life at the time, and even now, and I loved following quirky characters like Spoonie, Phalus, Todd, and even the Critic and Snob, with their unique styles, recurring gags, and intricate story arcs. Video reviews were about as fun and important to me as movies, games, and books, and I even had vague dreams of becoming a Channel Awesome contributor myself. The pleasure I derived from analyzing films was most important, but I also found myself looking up to Channel Awesome as a sort of model or ideal to aspire toward. I've considered returning to YouTube several times, and may still return someday, but the recent revelations about Channel Awesome, a site and community I loved, being so toxic behind the scenes, were pretty big, disheartening disincentives against returning to YouTube. I had lost interest in video reviewing toward the end, but changed the channel and related scandals, and the general fatigue and despair that has fallen over the world since 2016, left me burned out and kinda scared. But I may return to YouTube. I'm very excited about this new renaissance of video essays on YouTube. For now, however, I wanted to thank you for your support, explain my long absence, and apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being gone for so long and not saying anything. I'm I am sorry. Thanks for watching. Cheers.